Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hasbro Marvel Legends figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are taking a look at the four figures based off Spider-Man No Way Home in this particular wave of Legends. Now technically there is a fifth, but it's a Walmart exclusive and for those of you who don't know, we actually don't have Walmart down here in Australia so I wasn't able to get my hands on it, but nevertheless I'm still excited to unbox the ones we have. Now I'm pretty sure there are still a few few available in limited quantities from toyswonderland.com. I have left the link for that down in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and an awesome reward system. What we are going to do now though is kickstart the unboxings with none other than integrated suit Spidey. Here of course we have the box art and it's done in the usual Marvel Legends style. Big open window showcasing the figure himself, Spider-Man No Way Home down below, a shot of the integrated suit on the side, and another on the back. By the way, I really love that artwork, although it is slightly inaccurate. We do have a little bit of a read-up and emphasis on little, it's literally one sentence, plus some mug shots of the rest of the characters in the wave. So these three are the ones that unfortunately I passed on just because I don't have any connection to these two, and I've already got the Hot Toys version of Miles, so I didn't really find myself wanting the Legends one. Nevertheless, let's get Peter out here. Now just like the Hot Toys version of the integrated suit, this guy does have some inaccuracies, but we will touch on that a little bit later in the video. We do however have more figures to unbox, so let's move on to the black and gold suit. This one might just be one of the most visually striking, especially in 1-6 scale. I cannot wait to get mine in hand, but here we have him in Legends format. You can see he does come with one of the legs of Armadillo. We do have a gorgeous shot of the suit on the back, but interestingly enough, he doesn't have the red forearms like the figure himself does. You also have a little bit of a read-up which is very similar to the integrated suit. Now I'm not sure if we'll see a 2.0 version of this suit with more accurate colours. As time goes on, Hasbro does tend to do that. I wouldn't be surprised if we got a new version of this plus a deluxe version of integrated suit with the various spider legs on the back. But either way, in hand, I am already loving the way this guy looks. We do have two more figures to unbox though, so let's move on to Doctor Strange. And here we have him. Again, massive window with Doctor Strange himself coming with the most accessories of the bunch so far. We do have a shot of Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange on the back, and then a short read-up. Now, this technically is the second Doctor Strange figure that I now own from Hasbro. I have the evil version of Doctor Strange Supreme from What If, so we will be doing some comparisons throughout the course of the video. I personally really did like that one, and apparently this guy shares a ton of parts. But yeah, so far so good. Moving on though to our last figure in the wave, who is of course J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. Never in my wildest dreams did I think we'd get a J. Jonah Jameson figure, but here he is. Now he is using a lot of parts that we've seen previously from Marvel Legends, but you can't fault them for that. It's a pretty darn simple design. We do have an image of J. Jonah Jameson on the back, plus a little bit of a read-up. Now, I don't know if any companies are going to tackle J. Jonah Jameson in 1-6 scale. I know I would love to see it, and it would be a super simple design for a larger format figure, but for now, here we have him in 1-12 scale. And yeah, so far, I'm loving that head sculpt, but we do get two. What we are going to do now though, seeing as we are discussing head sculpts, is get all of the accessories that come with all four figures laid out in the light box and take a closer look 
and everything they come with. Here we have all the parts and pieces. Now starting off with integrated suit Spidey first, he literally only comes with a pair of thwip hands. They are relatively simple, you do have a hinge on the back so you can angle them down accurately, and yeah, the sculpt is perfectly serviceable. You do have black for the fingers and red for the rest of the hand, except on the back with a little bit more black. Now moving on to the black and gold suit Spidey, this guy has the same exact hands, except the colour scheme is reversed. I'm pretty sure as well these are a reuse from the upgraded suit Spidey as the back of the palm is completely smooth. Now Doctor Strange actually fares a little bit better. He comes with two magic effects and these are awesome. I love the sculpt, they're a translucent plastic, and the hands are pre-attached. This is something that I wish other companies, such as Hot Toys, would do as well. There is nothing more infuriating than trying to plug in some 1-6 scale hands into these magical effects. Hot Toys, this is the way you do it, which is crazy because Hasbro is a company that makes much cheaper figures, but they've nailed the design here. You have a wrist peg on the back that you can angle forwards and backwards, you get one larger one and of course one smaller one. You also get some regular gripping hands. He doesn't come with anything to grip, but I appreciate their inclusion. Now for J. Jonah Jameson, you actually get two head sculpts and I love them. They are both really strong in the likeness department. I love the digital face printing, the hair looks great, and I particularly love this one. It's very expressive, there's a ton of personality, and don't worry, you'll see them both on the body a little bit later in the video. You also get some open palm hands. I'm not exactly sure why, but yeah, they are a nice inclusion. This one does have a wedding ring on the correct finger, and it's painted in a nice gold. I wouldn't have minded if he'd also come with a newspaper that said Daily Bugle on it, but I'm not complaining. I still love the array that we got. What we are going to do now, though, is bring out integrated suit Spidey and take a closer look. Here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that, and yeah, I'm actually really loving this Spidey. I didn't think I was going to. I thought that the black and gold suit was going to be the standout in the wave, and I may change my mind towards the end of the video on that, but for now, I'm loving the way this looks. The gold just pops. It's vibrant, but not overly so. And then we get to the body. The proportions look fantastic. He's not too big and bulky, he can get his arms down by his sides, and you can see all of the musculature sculpted in. The sculpt is also very crisp. Moving on to the black and gold suit, the same thing can be said for him. The sculpt is very impressive. While there are some inaccuracies on both Spideys, I think this guy is slightly more inaccurate than Integrated Suit. He still looks great, I love the colour scheme. For those of you who don't know, Black Suit Spidey is my jam, so this is kinda right in my wheelhouse, plus the gold is a very nice accent. Moving on to Doctor Strange. I love the way this guy looks as well. There is a lot of love coming from me for this wave, but so far I'm very impressed. There's a ton of texture sculpted into the suit itself, he's got pleats, he's got wrinkles, he's got a lot going on. And just visually speaking, this guy is going to stand out on the shelf. Plus, he does have the big honkin' red cloak of levitation, so there is something to be said for how well this guy is going to display with something as impressive as that cloak on his back. Moving on to J. Jonah Jameson. This guy is kind of the opposite of everything I just said about Doctor Strange. He's not going to stand out due to the sheer size and bulk of his outfit with a big honk and cape, but he is going to stand out due to the personality in the second head sculpt, which you will see on the figure, don't you worry. But overall, yes, I am very impressed with this wave. What we are going to do now though, is take them off the rotating turntable, punch in, and take a closer look 
at the details. Here we have him, up close and personal. And is it just me, or is Hasbro getting better and better converting these MCU suit designs into figure format? Now, I know, there are some slight inaccuracies here, so let's talk about them first. They are mainly to do with the forearms. In the latest trailer, we see this integrated suit in action for the very first time, and he doesn't have these gold braces. The hands are also the reverse colour scheme. The fingers are red rather than being black. So if you wanted to, you could take the hands from the black and gold suit and swap them out. Therefore, the hands would be slightly more accurate, and you can actually remove the gold braces. But unfortunately, this is kind of like a bit of a channel peg type situation, so that will be left visible if you no longer use these braces. So it's not the most ideal solution in the world. For me, this guy is going in the display as a concept version of the integrated suit, because Technically, that's what this guy is. He's based off early artwork, but for the most part, everything else looks very accurate. All the way down to the metallic gold spider. I love this. Yes, it's gaudy. Yes, it's a bit of bling, but it does integrate the iron spider suit and the upgraded suit very nicely, and I'm pretty sure that's exactly what this suit does in the movie. Now, the head sculpt is a little bit thin, but to be honest, I kind of like the way it looks. It is slightly stylized, but it's very clearly Spidey. Now, they haven't done any web line paneling detail, it's just unpainted red plastic. I will be going in with a Gundam marker and trying to mark them up just to give a little bit more depth, but there is a ton of texture on the surface, and I love the way it looks. You can feel it, it's visceral, it is really there, it's on the black sections as well, which are kind of more of a charcoal grey, but I'm not complaining, I love the contrast. I initially thought that the bracer sections were going to be a reuse from this Spidey, the Zombie Hunter Spidey, but they are completely new. There is a lot of newly moulded and sculpted stuff here, which Hasbro definitely tends to do with their movie figures. But so far, yeah, I'm really loving Integrated Suit Spidey. Next up, here we have the Black and Gold Suit Spidey, and yeah, I am loving the way this suit looks, both in the film and here in figure format. There's one thing in particular that I'm really drawn to, and it's the fact that you can have his arms flat down by his sides. Bringing in this guy once again, you can see his arms kind of flare out. Due to the sculpted nature of the torso, you can't bring them any closer to the body, whereas this guy looks a lot more natural. Now, yes, there are these massive cutouts in the back for the butterfly joints, and they look a little bit funky from the front when you do use them, but I would rather them be there and allow you to get him looking way more proportionate just standing there than not. They've also gone in with some gold paint on all of the web lines. Now, it's not the cleanest thing in the world. You can see that they kind of go out of the channels in a few different areas, but for the most part, it looks great. It looks exactly how it should. Now, there is that added tech detail sculpted in very, very softly. It's faint, but it is there. Now, in other versions of this suit in figure format that has been painted kind of with a grey wash over the top, I would have loved to have seen it, but at the very least, the texture is there, so when the light hits it, yeah, it picks it up a treat. Now, there is once again an inaccuracy here. These were supposed to be red, but then for some reason either Sony or Marvel decided to change it so it's just black and gold like the rest of the suit. So this was done based off the concept art, and they remained red. I kind of like the pop of colour on the forearms, even though it's not accurate, but still, it is out before the movie, and you'll know I love having my merch before the film actually drops. Coming down to the legs, you do have the black and gold once again, plus a little bit of sculpted in detail, which is rather messy, up on the top of his boots here. Overall though, yeah, black and gold suit Spidey might just be one of my new favourites. Moving on to Doctor Strange. Now, this is my first MCU Doctor Strange in the collection, and I didn't really know what to expect. 
I certainly wasn't expecting a head sculpt as good as this one is. That is very clearly Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange in 112 scale. I love the face printing specifically with the eyes, the goatee looks great and the hair is a separate attachment. So there is a little bit of depth around the hairline plus the little fringe comes over the top. I love the way it looks, it's absolutely him. Now he is currently wearing the Cloak of Levitation, but you can remove it. It literally pegs in to his back, there is a ton of texture sculpted on the inside, and then you have the accurate detail on the outside. I wouldn't have minded some darker red washes down in the crevices, but I still like the way it looks and the way it fits on the body. Now unfortunately it does kind of ride a little bit high. I wouldn't have minded if there was another way to secure it, I don't know, maybe some pegs around the front, then again you couldn't really display him without it if they had done that. Now you do have the Eye of Agamotto, as you can see I'm kind of fighting with it because it does get in the way of the cape itself. It is removable, there is some detail sculpted in, but unfortunately it is closed. You can't see the time stone on the inside, but it is painted and sculpted rather nicely. So too is the rest of the body, it looks great. There is a ton of texture on the surface, there are wrinkles and creases and pleats and various pieces of material going over other pieces, the belt is a separate piece, and it's multi-layered in the sculpt as well. You have the sling ring permanently sculpted to his belt, and there are certain buckles picked out in some silver plastic. I love the way this looks, I don't know if I've said that already, but I'd probably say it a few more times, this is a very impressive sculpt. Then coming down to the legs, there are some baggy pants underneath, and then you do have some very Doctor Strange looking boots. You've got multiple different buckles, you do have some crinkling and wrinkling, it looks awesome. So yeah. This guy might just be one of my favourites in the wave. Lastly, here we have J. Jonah Jameson. Now let's talk about the suit itself first, because it is rather simple, there's not a lot to discuss. Then we'll talk about the magnificent head sculpts. Now the suit I'm fairly sure we have seen before. This time it's done in a navy blue, he's got his top button done up, this top piece is a rubbery overlay and then the arms are pegged in separately to the body. There is a bunch of wrinkling sculpted in and it is asymmetrical, they haven't just taken the sculpt for one arm and then reversed it for the other side, they are actually unique sculpts. You do also have a shirt underneath that is a separate piece to the neck. That means you do have a little bit of a gap around the neck itself, but I personally don't mind that, it adds a little bit of depth. Then coming down to the legs, once again a bunch of wrinkling, and yes it's asymmetrical here too. You also have this crease line down the front, as you'd expect from a real suit, and then some very simple black shoes. Now let's talk about the head sculpt. I know we've already seen both in the accessory segment, but this sculpt is awesome on the body. It fits perfectly, it's proportionate, it's not too big, it's not too small, I can see the likeness 100%. Now for those wondering what the other head sculpt looks like, here we have it on the body, and yeah, I love this one as well. It's a little bit more expressive, there's a ton of personality here, and let's be honest, he makes this face a lot in the Spider-Man universe, so I'm pretty sure those of you out there who have this figure are probably displaying him with this sculpt. I know that this is definitely something that I'm considering doing in my display. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have all of the No Way Home figures in the wave standing together. And yeah, they look great together. The two Spidey figures are of the same build, the proportions look almost identical, and yeah, I don't have any complaints here, they're slightly smaller than the other two characters because this version of Peter Parker is in high school, he's a smaller guy, it makes total sense. Now the tallest of the bunch is Doctor Strange. Benedict Cumberbatch is a very tall dude, he's also wearing those thick chonky soled boots, so he's gonna be a little bit taller, so yeah, no complaints there either. Then lastly, coming somewhere in the middle, we have J. Jonah Jameson. He looks awesome as well, he is bigger than Spidey, as he should be, 
but he's also at the same time not too tall. Now this is something I really wanted to try out. Here we have the evil version of Doctor Strange from What If alongside the movie version. And I am very tempted to do a display where these two are facing off against each other. They look great together. Now even though the What If one is slightly more stylized, it's not overly so. I can still tell that it's supposed to be Benedict Cumberbatch just with a lot more of a sunken in look to the cheeks and the eyes having those big dark circles, but I can still see the likeness. It's exaggerated, but that kind of works for me. Either way, they are roughly the exact same height. There are a lot of pieces which are brand new here for this Doctor Strange compared to this guy, but then again, the underlying body does have a bit of reuse, so it makes sense they're the same height. And lastly, here we have the What If version of Spidey, just because it's my only other Marvel Legends Spidey in the collection, alongside Integrated Suit. And yes, technically you have seen these together a little bit earlier in the video, but I wanted to give you an idea of scale. What if Spidey is just a hair taller, but he's a lot bulkier, specifically up at the shoulders? I actually prefer the slim and trim look of integrated suit. It's a little bit more realistic, it looks like a dude in a suit, but that being said, I still absolutely adore the What If Spidey. Just going over articulation. Now we will be doing it in rapid succession, which means we'll take a look at all four figures in a row, so I'll try and make it as quick and painless as possible. Now starting off with the head sculpt, it is on a double ball peg, so going forward and back to there, a fairly decent range, swivel and then pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there, they will go forward and back, and there is a butterfly joint at the shoulder. But the weird thing is, if you move one, the other one kind of moves as well. I'm not sure what kind of engineering is going on in the torso. You have a swivel at the bicep, a double bend at the elbow, and of course a hinge and swivel for the wrist. As for the torso, you have a crunch forward and back, swivel, and unfortunately no pivot side to side. The legs go forward to there, they go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend at the knee which goes way past 90, and of course a hinge and swivel side to side for some ankle rocker. Next up for black and gold suit, initially I thought the articulation was the same, but it is slightly different. This time we have a ball joint with a swivel at the base of the head itself, so you do get a ton more range forward and back, same amount of swivel and a little bit less pivot. The arms go up to there, they will go forward and back, there is a butterfly fly joint at the shoulder, but this time they move independently of one another, which I far prefer. Swivel at the bicep, a double bend at the elbow, and a hinge and swivel for the wrist itself. Torso can crunch forward and back, and you do get that same swivel. The legs go forward to there, they will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend at the knee, lastly a hinge forward and back for the foot, and swivel side to side for ankle rocker. Moving on to Doctor Strange, I have left the cloak of levitation off for obvious reasons, it will literally just get in the way. Now starting off with the head sculpt, it is on a double ball peg just like integrated suit Spidey. Forward and back to there, swivel and then pivot side to side. The arms go up to there, they will go forward and back, but due to the V taper of the torso, they kind of go slightly outwards when you bring them forward. There is a little tiny amount of butterfly up here at the shoulder. Swivel at the bicep, a double bend at the elbow, plus a hinge and swivel for the wrist itself. The torso is on a ball joint, so you get some crunch forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. Due to the thick, rubbery nature of the robes, the legs kind of struggle to get forward more than that. They will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend at the knee, but once again this stuff does get in the way. You have a swivel at the top of the boot, 
plus a hinge forward and back, and swivel side to side for ankle rocker. Lastly, for J. Jonah Jameson, if you are familiar with the Marvel Legends suited body, this will be almost identical to the other figures that have used this body before him. Now, starting off with the head, you do have a ball joint, plus you can see that swivel forward and back, so you do get a fairly decent range of motion swivel and then pivot side to side. The arms themselves will go up to here. They are rather stiff on mine. They will go forward and back, swivel at the bicep, a double bend at the elbow, plus hinge and swivel for the wrist. The torso does have a ball joint, but you don't get a ton of range due to the fully sculpted rubbery nature of the jacket up top. You do, however, have a swivel down below and a teeny amount of pivot. The legs have a similar issue to Doctor Strange. They bump into the jacket going forward to there. They will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend at the knee, plus that very same hinge and swivel style joint for the foot itself. Just wrapping up on the Marvel Legends Spider-Man No Way Home figures. Now for a wave of figures released prior to the movie, this needs to build some hype. Does it do that for me? Yeah, absolutely. I cannot wait to see the film, and these figures have got me even more excited. Starting off with the integrated suit first, I love the design. Now, I understand it's not for everyone. It's got a little bit too much bling for some people, and I totally get it. But for me, the charcoal, the red, and then the big gold spider logo on the chest, it looks awesome. And it's very toyetic. It translates perfectly to a Marvel Legends release. I can't wait to see what other companies do with this design, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see a 2.0 version of this guy from Hasbro sometime down the line, with potentially an unmasked head sculpt, some interchangeable arms to peg into his back, but for now this is a relatively simple stripped back version of the suit, and I'm all for it. Moving on to the black and gold suit, the most inaccurate figure in this wave, but that doesn't really phase me. I know it's crazy to say, but it's a relatively inexpensive release. As I said just a second ago, this wave is out before the film itself, so the designs are based on concept art, there are going to be some discrepancies. And obviously I'm talking about the red on the forearms. It's not ideal, I would have liked this to have been 100% accurate, maybe delay the figure to make it slightly more accurate to the movie, but I understand why they didn't. They wanted to get this guy out there. And as he stands, I still really like him. He's incredibly poseable, the colour scheme with the black and gold pops on the shelf, and to be honest, I kind of never minded the red on the forearms. I do like that pop of colour. Moving on though to Doctor Strange, this guy is fantastic. It might even be the highlight of the wave for me, because that head sculpt is so good. I also love the magic effects, the outfit looks awesome with the texture and the various different layers, and then the cape, even though it's big and bulky, it looks the part. So yeah, Doctor Strange gets a huge tick from me. Lastly though, we have J. Jonah Jameson, and this figure has a ton of personality. It's one that's going to be sitting on the shelf. Someone walks into your room and they do a double take. They ask you, do you have J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson in a figure format? And you're going to be like, yeah, hell yeah, I do. And he's awesome. As I said, personality. The second head sculpt oozes it. Plus, he comes with that pointing finger, so you know he can be telling all kinds of people off, including Spidey himself. So, while this wave does have some inaccuracies with the Spidey figures, overall I'm still loving it, and can thoroughly recommend it, specifically if you're like me, and you're in a bit of a Spidey mood, and you want to pick up some merch from the film, this is a relatively inexpensive way to have some No Way Home figures in your display, rather early. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com, I have included the link down in the description below, they have 12 month instalment plans and an awesome reward system. While you're down there, check out Six Scale Network, the Facebook group, come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel, like, comment and subscribe, and we'll catch you 
in the next video.